uh, to Executive Director of the Kate Institute for International Leadership, Ambassador Kurt Volker, um, on, on why this is important and why he is an important gentleman to remember. That probably is an understatement. But, sir, thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. It's, a, it's great to be here. It's a sad occasion, but uh, as you point out, it's a huge event for the country, and, and it means a lot from so many different perspectives. If you think about it, I, it we usually do this for former presidents, uh, rarely uh, for, for senators, uh, or anyone else for that matter. Uh, but he's just not and wasn't just any other senator, was he? Not at all. No, he is the greatest president we never had, is the way I would think of it. He it was respected universally around the world, um, whether it is people who are fighting for freedom or democracy or allies. Uh, he had touched so many people's lives in so many ways. He combined a strong commitment to U.S. national security and global security with a passionate commitment for freedom and democracy and human rights. And domestically, he was interested in working across the aisle based on the issues. He wanted to get things done. So he had a, a long record of bipartisan work, as well as a strong record of being a conservative Republican. So he, he really put together a lot of things that uh, we really don't see anywhere else. We don't see any leaders like him right now. You know, the only thing that worries me, Ambassador, is in these moments where we should rightly pay our respects and, 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 and think fondly. Uh, it tends to be short-lived, and we go back to our carping, fighting, uh, never conceding anything to the other side selves. And that's what worries me, because, you know, yeah. you can believe all you want passionately about, you know, my way or the highway, but if you don't get the stuff out of your inbox, it sits in the inbox with nothing getting done, right? Well, that's right. And I, and I think you're absolutely right. You know, this is a vibrant democracy, and people are going to fight over things. Uh, we can come together around key principles and a leader like Senator McCain, but you're right. We, we, it will go back to some of the infighting. That being said, uh, there are two things I would point to as part of his legacy that I think will make a difference going forward. One is he has mentored a younger generation of senators uh, over the years, uh, first term, second term senators from both sides of the aisle taken them on trips around the world, taken them to international security conferences. Uh, there's people like Dan Sullivan from Alaska or Joni Ernst from Iowa or Chris Murphy from Connecticut. And I think this is a very committed group of senators. They, they care about national security. They care about the same values that Senator McCain stood for. So that's one thing that I think is up, uh, a cause for optimism going forward. Uh, the other is that I think um, in the past few years, especially, we've seen most of the country come together on foreign policy in a way that had not been true really since the end of the Cold War, uh, whether it's concerning Russia or China or Iran, nuclear weapons, terrorism. There's, there's been a, uh, a renewed uh, consensus about American leadership, cautious leadership, not overextending ourselves, but cautious American leadership around our, our, our core values and our core interests. You know, Ambassador, you knew him far better than I, but in all the years that I interviewed uh, Senator McCain, it uh, goes back decades, but the one thing that was consistent was his huge concern, uh, worry, uh, uh, and angst over Russia. Uh, yeah. I, I remember him strongly agreeing uh, with Mitt Romney when Mitt Romney said Russia was our biggest threat, when then right. President Obama dismissed it, said the same. He was consistent through the, the Trump administration that we were minimizing that threat and we better be careful, said the same to President Bush when he said, I mm -hmm. looked into the eyes of Vladimir Putin, and you remember that. Yes. So it was always a big worry of him, down, down to going to his grave, and, and, and his fear was that we were taking this guy lightly and dismissing this country's encroachments even today with talk that Russia and China are planning joint military exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was John McCain screaming from the grave. Yeah. Well, uh, he saw it from the very beginning. And the reason he saw it was because he understood that authoritarianism at home leads to aggression abroad. And uh, especially very with well the history put. we had very with well Russia. Put. And so he saw that uh, that's where Vladimir Putin was heading. And the fact that they later invaded Georgia and later invaded Ukraine was not a surprise to Senator McCain. I'm curious, Ambassador, to have you here, and I, I don't want to pigeonhole you here, but what do you think a President McCain would have done with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, of Crimea? Well, I think, uh, first off, you know, he was running in 2008. Right. Um, and uh, that was just after the Russian invasion of Georgia. 
Had he been elected then, I think you would have seen a substantial increase in U.S. economic, military, political support for Georgia, and at a very high cost to Russia, economically, sanctions and so forth. And that would have deterred Russia from further aggression, such as we saw in Ukraine in 2014. Had he been president in 2014, uh, having already seen what had happened in Georgia, I think you would have seen uh, military support to the Ukrainians immediately right after the Russians were trying to uh, take Crimea. That didn't happen, and we now have a protracted conflict there. It's much harder to deal with. Ambassador, real honor having you. Thank you very much, sir, for taking the My time. My pleasure to be here. Thank you.